Hi, Mitali. Hi, Karan. How are you? Good morning. I'm great. Well, How good evening you? to you, but good morning to me. Good morning. What time is it in there, Mitali? It is 8.30 a.m. 8.33 a.m. Yeah. 8.30 a.m. And... Uh, and uh, and uh, you were, can you t- uh, tell us how come you're in the States right now? So I've actually been here for the past four months now, four and a half nearly. Okay. Um, I actually came here to do an advanced dog training course, which was starting in January. And then my husband and I were traveling for a little while before uh, uh-huh. we actually, before I went on on the course. So we finished traveling and then he went back and I stayed on. Uh, I finished my course and I graduated uh, uh, last week on Friday. Uh-huh. Um, and since then, I was actually supposed to be back uh, next week. Uh-huh. But because of everything that's going on, um, I, I don't know when I'll be back now. But yeah, yeah. These, are, these are trying times right now with Ali. All of us are, as you know, on lockdown over here. And uh, can you get out and about in, uh, I believe you're in Texas, right? Uh, I am. Know. I am in Texas. Uh, we are also in uh, a lockdown right now. Uh, I am currently staying with my aunt and uncle and I'm really lucky that they have like a big house and the, the community that they live in is actually quite open. Um, so I do get to go on like walks uh, in the mornings and evenings, uh-huh. but that's pretty much it. Um, but I'm actually very lucky that I, ha- that I have uh, a dog here with me that I'm fostering uh, because honestly, I, now that I think of it, I was like, I would go crazy without a dog, <laughs> with not having a dog here. But. I believe you have two dogs, you have one dog and one cat back home in, uh, in Bombay, right? And, yes, I uh, do. They, you must be missing them terribly. Ah, so much. And this is the longest I have ever gone without seeing them. How long have you been away for? Uh, for I will be away. I I left India on 22nd November. So it's been four months. Yeah. It's been some time for you then. It has been a while. Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready to be back, but I'm also enjo- really enjoying my time here. Uh-huh. Uh, it's, it's, it's great. The weather's great. Uh, also enjoying some downtime. Um, and I'm like, just updating myself, upgrading myself, which is, I think, the most important thing that uh, I do. Uh, just reading books, yeah, et cetera. So, so can you, uh, we have a uh, Dipshika, I think, who's asked us, and I was going to actually do the same thing. Can you show us what dog you have? I believe you've been fostering a dog, as you mentioned. Absolutely. He is taking his morning nap right here. Uh, that is Normie. Uh, his name is Norman. He is an American Staffordshire Night Terrier. Um, he, there you go. He's like, hey, mommy, good morning. He's like, okay. <laughs> um, so he was actually uh, a dog that was um, abandoned and was at a shelter. Uh, unfortunately, um, a lot of, because the it's absolutely crazy, uh, the um, abandonment rate, well, I guess, you know, even in India, it's it's pretty bad. But out here, it's it's really, really bad. So... Uh, I think according to the statistics... Some of your biggest fans are joining us. Alka, in your thoughts, is your biggest fan. Then we have uh, Ruch895, who is also your biggest fan. So, uh, oh my God, hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm excited. Honestly, like, I think this was... I'm glad this is happening because I was just... And I think whoever has been following me and knows how crazy my life has been over the past three months. Like I was literally like doing training sessions or training dogs about, I would say eight, 10 hours a day. And I just had no time. And I think before I left, I used to do a lot of like chat sessions and lives. And and then it was like literally a complete stop because it was just so, so, so crazy. Um, so I'm glad this is coming at a perfect time. Well, we're glad to have you here. And I'm, I'm glad that you have so many fans over here. Let's have a competition for till the end of this uh, conversation. <laughs> Let's find out who your biggest uh, fan is. Let's see. We'll just, we'll uh, we'll uh, come up with the rules soon. Uh, for uh, for some people, I'm pretty sure most of the people who have joined us right now know who you are. But can yeah. you just give us a brief introduction and a background to how it all began and how long you've been doing this? So um, I have actually been into I would say into dogs, a dog lover ever since I was Uh 
like four or five. I remember having my first dog when I was about four years of age, um, and it was really funny because growing up, I was uh, I grew up in a small town uh, near Goa, which is called Ratnagiri, yeah. and we had a big house, big you know backyard. We were lucky enough to have like a big yard, um, and I I remember childhood memories of myself. being you know i used to wake up and i used to every like evening i used to be i i was lucky that i used to have actually decent amount of free time in the evening which i don't just think kids nowadays are not lucky enough to have uh, but i used to always be that kid that used to you know go rescue like stray puppies from like gutters and everything and bring them home wow. and i remember my grandmom used to like keep yelling at me saying why are you getting them into the house and i used to bathe them and care for them and all of that uh, i also used to volunteer with my uh, with our vet because we had a lot of dogs my dad was a dog lover um so you did mention have... in your background that you had like you grew up with a lot of dogs in yes, your yes i like, grew up with farm. i've had Well, my current dog, which is Pantu, which everybody is talking about, is my thirteenth dog. I've had twelve dogs oh, wow. until now. Wow. Yeah, we've always had dogs. Um, so it was that. I think that it was always like something that I was very passionate about, uh, uh-huh. but never really transformed into. Also, because uh, you know, at that point of time, I think dog training wasn't. really considered a career um and i remember growing up i i used to always say i wanted to be a vet uh-huh um and i i i told my you know i told my grandparents that i wanted to be a vet uh and you know again they were like no 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 like that's just not like you know that's just not something that's like you know we prefer you to do um so anyway and then i actually started doing my engineering um which i was just not excited about whatsoever um and then i was also doing uh, after that i was pursuing my bmm and my second year of college i actually had uh i rescued a puppy well my husband and i who's also on this chat right now actually uh-huh. uh my boyfriend then has been now we rescued a a small little indie puppy from the roadside who was being shooed away and hit by this shopkeeper um so we actually you know stopped the car picked her up got into an argument with him mm-hmm. uh he said there was this time she he said oh she's been uh his exact words were malum nahi kidhar se aayi hai do din se mere dukaan ke baahar baithi hai and logo ka kapda khinchti hai you know people don't want to come into my shop etc mm-hmm. etc anyway so he's like i just want her gone like blah, blah, blah. So anyway so we picked her up uh decided that you know we're going to put her up for adoption this was 8 years ago uh she's going to be 9 actually nearly 9 years ago um, is your so dog we... pant pa- you say her name yes. is panty okay yes her name is panty my dog's name is panty and my cat's name is chuddy let's wow. just <laughs> we have someone asking please ask your muff she muff she i don't know who that is but i'm sure your fans yeah. know and only if yeah. he doesn't find himself for your back to adopt normal I know everyone's like I think a lot of people that that follow me and like people who know me are all of us are very very I think I, I'm I'm so it's really cute that they're equally stressed uh as me because we actually want to I I need to find Norman a home before I leave uh-huh. um and we're just like I'm working hard on that uh aspect of you know while I'm here and which is also one of the reasons why I uh volunteered and ask to foster him because that way I could actually have some more time to work on his adoption. Ah. Uh, so so anyway, it's out well that you're there because uh, you said you have some time here now and it's uh, we don't know when our stuff is going to open up. So uh, and you started you agreed to for how long you have you had uh, Norm for? Norman so Norman was assigned to me on my course so basically uh which is I I love the structure of our course actually but one of the uh one of the things that we were actually did so what what the academy does is they pick up dogs uh with extreme behavioral issues that have been given up for extreme behavioral issues um and or almost like either some of them like norman was actually at a at a shelter and was going to be put down and then this lady who has a rescue went and picked him up along with his brother and like a few other dogs that she rescued mm-hmm. and uh they basically get these dogs on the course and we pretty much transform them and train them throughout the three months for everything and it's it's i i always said this and whoever followed my journey through the course knows this if somebody was to tell me that 
this dog would be doing advanced obedience off leash in a matter of 12 weeks i would have laughed at them on day one uh, yeah. but it was it was absolutely mind blowing to be a part of that journey um yeah. so yeah so so basically will, he was assigned uh, you know to me Uh, we'll uh, we'll get into your some specifics of how because you uh, I did t- uh, tell our viewers that and some people know that you did a course with Shirin Merchant back in 2012 if I'm yes. if I'm not mistaken I did and that was yes. uh, that's a fairly advanced course as well if someone wants to put uh, I mean it starts from the basic but it it gives you a lot of tools yeah well I think she's got like a basic then she's got an I think now she has an advanced that time she didn't uh-huh. um and. Yeah, then I think she also has like it's different modules. She also does have like uh, aggression and yeah. Okay, so so uh, so we'll uh, we'll talk uh, and maybe you can tell uh, once we have some more people join in. Uh, sure. We, you can tell us about what is the stuff that you learned over there over in sure. the states uh, and what you didn't know. Also. Absolutely, absolutely. We could definitely work on that. Also, that, some of my clients are here. We have some people. Hi, Kinja. <laughs> uh so vidhi p who has asked a question Hi, about uh, how do you get hus- husky from begging food every time we eat so basically uh, table scraps how do you stop them from getting so uh vidhi i am so that honestly it's a very very simple question to that uh, so a very simple answer to that um someone at some point of time has fed your dog off the table um and dogs learn out of what they get success out of and if somebody you know it's happened at some point of time and which is why your dog has learned that he can get food off the table um you know i i i always say that there are a lot of places a lot of other places that we keep food as well for example pantry a refrigerator but a dog never goes outside and begs any uh, outside any of those places because it hasn't gotten food out of any of those places um so at some point he's definitely had success getting food off the table which is why he's staying there uh and begging for food the only way to uh get rid of this behavior is with something called extinction which is where you will just have to wait him out and not give him any attention when i mean like not even saying uh no you know not even saying no while he's staying there standing there watching you uh giving him no kind of attention or reinforcement whatsoever while he's performing that particular behavior a lot of people actually think that you know by telling the dog to go away or you know talking to the dog saying oh what you're doing is wrong that is still interacting with your dog which could still lead on the behavior um so just absolutely no no engagement with the dog whatsoever when you guys are eating and very soon he will realize at some point of time that this behavior is just not working i'm just not getting either attention or food is just not worth it and he's going to stop so basically what you're saying there is a human element angle to this oh and absolutely that, and that's something that a lot of people uh, have to look within let's say the uh, the the pet parent the dog parent or maybe the immediate family if the person i'm just repeating what you already said please just yes. please let me know if i'm uh, for my own knowledge also uh, yes. that uh, <clears throat> it is uh, up to the person themselves to be i mean it's almost heartbreaking not to give your dog something because if you have that absolutely but absolutely that's something that's an absolute no no that you don't absolutely. you don't indulge the dog so the the thing is that and i i i and i'm guilty of this habit too and i've i've been guilty in the past of doing this exact same thing so you know i and in fact i i always talk to my clients about this as well and it's important to understand that just because i am i am you know i do what i do doesn't mean like i am always doing everything right there are times when you know i fall trapped to my own habits as well um but it's important to understand that uh if you have to think how dogs think um and dogs always will do what they get success out of uh, and even if that means that you know a lot of people and it's a simple thing like for example we talk about like dogs jumping on you you know uh and a lot of people don't like that but at some point of time number one they they encourage that when the dog was a puppy because they say oh my god he's so cute and so tiny and you know so at that age uh the dog thinks that oh oh my god like Uh, as in people think it's okay to do that because he's tiny but fast forward 6 months and it's suddenly not okay because the dog is like 20 30 40 kg old uh, yeah. but at some point we have we have reinforced it in the dog uh, and let the dog know that it's okay uh, to do that particular behavior and then suddenly we say okay now it's not okay uh, and at that point of time is just not fair to the dog and the most important thing to remember is that if you are not consistent 
like every single time like 100 out of 100 times you're basically telling the dog that there might be that 1% chance that i might be successful in this behavior so might as well just give it a try because i might be successful in this behavior that's a great point thank you let's move on to another question we have prashant rajan who is asking that uh, hi i have adopted a mongrel uh, street dog uh, a month back and he's okay. had, and uh, i have had puppies and the dogs at home and i've had dogs at home all my life Uh, yeah. But this puppy that he adopted is extremely dominant and adamant. Okay. Uh, there's a okay. little bit of aggression as well uh, while biting. So, uh, okay. can you suggest what he can do with that? Uh, honestly, again, like I've, uh, he I also has gone and added in a se- separate question that they have enough distracting toys, chew sticks, but nothing seems to be working here. Okay, uh, Prashanti, I would definitely say. uh this is definitely a, a very bo- broad topic and a broad question uh and personally i generally do not feel comfortable giving like you know when you say aggression or biting uh because there's honestly there's teething there's actually um you know there's so many different kinds of aggressions so many different kinds of aggressions and which is why i avoid giving just one advice uh one common advice to you know just one one when somebody says aggression because it's just not uh responsible of me to do that but what i can tell you is um the fact that he is a puppy i would definitely want to see this because a lot of times most puppies are just teething and when you say he is extremely dominating and adamant he could definitely just be a very very high energy puppy that needs his energy drained out the right way uh and that could not be also he seems like a puppy that just needs engagement because if the toys are just lying around and he does not really care about them um he probably just wants you to play with the toys with him constantly and like once the toys are pretty much like you know it's like a live toy as versus a dead toy so like when the toy is moving and like the toy is just lying around uh-huh. uh, but i would definitely urge you to maybe send me some videos in my uh, dm so that way i can you know actually look at the behavior and tell you exactly what to do at that point of time uh, but for any puppy i always say you know any sort of obedience training uh, another thing another very very important thing that i recommend to a lot of uh, of my clients and a lot of uh, you know puppy parents is uh, not to feed the puppies like out of a bowl just for free so i actually use and well norman is 4 years of age but i still use all his meals uh, to in some sort of training or some sort of exercise so that way he's it's like okay at this it two it's like two birds with one stone so i'm feeding him at the same time and i'm also getting his energy out in the right positive way rather than just feeding him out of the bowl then he has so much energy and he's just bur- bursting with energy and then i don't know how to control that so mm-hmm. that that was that is something i always that's, do with that's puppies. a great point like, we, you know we have a lot of questions so uh, that we have to get to also so uh, yeah. for uh, for a viewer who sent that question i'm uh, prashant please uh, dm mitali uh, her address is mitali salvi is it's at mitali salvi i believe Uh, yes that is right and uh, yes. you are more than happy to help him out with any specific requirement that he has regarding his puppy yes. let's uh, yes. there is a, there is a very interesting question uh, uh, which is, and it maybe it's uh, going to because it's you have a very similar arrangement at home is uh, yes. how do i teach my two month old pup to not use my six month old cat as a chew toy i found that really funny and maybe you can speak yes. of your own experience about this yes um so number 1 is um and i think this is by let's let's disco okay so um this is how i did it uh personally for me uh the most important aspect of this part is that you have a two month old puppy which uh-huh. means that you have you know extreme energy bouts uh also a lot of uh excitement a lot of teething so number 1 is i would actually only let your puppy interact with your cat or like your puppy around your 6 month or your 2 month old puppy around your 6 month old cat when your puppy is absolutely exhausted uh and those are the only points of times i would actually let them interact because again remember it might be very cute now because you have a 2 month old puppy uh and it's a small little puppy but in a few months trust me it's not going to be cute when he's actually trying to attack your cat um so i would actually you know work on only letting them interact when my puppy is absolutely tired and is you know just about to go to sleep and those are the only interactions i would have because dogs learn through habits if he gets into the habit of chewing on your cat right now it's going to turn into you know a long time behavior uh which is just something i would not have well uh from my 
personal experience and my personal situation um i well my dog does uh is pretty well trained and she does listen to me uh but i think the most important thing i would say about mine and my dog's relationship is the fact that she always looks to me for direction because i always tell her what to do and that is the most important thing of a human dog relationship um is your dog should always look to you as okay what do you want me to do next let me know uh that way and i always say it's and i always say this it's important to tell your dog what to do because dogs always do not make the best decisions and we know that i would not have a job if dogs made the best decisions all the time um but it's important to always let your dog know what to do uh so even norman here like every step of the day i'm always letting him know okay this is what you have to do now this is where you have to sleep now this is where you have to do now that way he really he honestly does not and dogs always need leadership um and they always you know don't want to make the tough decisions they just want to follow the lead uh which is why it's important to just let them know so with my you know i have a lot of dogs coming home i have a lot, i have cats coming home and i think the most important thing that i've told my um you know at home i told my dog why our training and my the communication that i have with us is that look whatever comes into the house don't worry it's not going to affect you but you just have to follow what i say so if i say you have to go to your bed and there's like 30 cats in the room you've got to go to your bed that's important and like if i say that's not okay that's not okay i will make sure that you're okay and your needs are taken care of but you've got to do what i've got to do um but i hope you have a lot of questions uh, mai let's let's move on uh, thank you for answering that uh, i think all yeah. that makes a lot of sense let yeah. i mean i have lost track so guys i would say hold your questions while we are uh, answering one uh, the the previous ones so uh, there was a okay so there was arun dabawatwa is saying how can i reduce the excitement drive in my golden retriever when i feel when i when i free with the chain she is very hyper and running too much when i get uh, to take the chain I'm yeah well again I'm guessing uh I would have a lot of questions out there again is like <laughs> how much uh how old is your dog uh how much exercise mentally and physically are you providing to your dog uh what sort of activities do you do with her every day uh it's also very very important to keep your dog mentally and physically stimulated so even simple things like if you're doing the same things every day the same walk around the block the same you know it it, it gets repetitive and then it stops mentally uh stimulating a dog's brain which is why I always stress on so even here like now that I have Norman every day I try and take a different route uh, a different walk so you know it, it's always like there's new smells new sounds uh, new you know new sights every single day for him um, and that really helps in you know keeping your dog mentally uh stimulated as well as of course physical stimulation is important but I think a lot of um, people don't realize the importance of a dog being mentally active and using its brain um and that's really important so i would definitely ask him that so uh, tali so, before we move on to the next question why don't you talk a little yes. bit about the current situation with the corona virus yes. and especially about the lockdown in uh, in india can you talk give some tips or do you have some suggestions for people how should they interact with their dogs mental stimulation you mentioned that can you tell us yes. about how we can go about doing stuff like that So uh well I'm in a lockdown here and uh whoever is following me knows what I'm doing with Norman every single day but who isn't I'm actually working on teaching him uh because this is it's easy to do in the house I'm actually working on teaching him a lot of tricks in the house um so I'm actually you know we've been working a lot on a lot of fun clicker tricks with him which is also very very mentally stimulating so it's constantly like keeping his brain active thinking okay what does she want me to do now what am I supposed to do now oh okay maybe she wants me to put like my paws in this box okay maybe she wants me to turn around um i will be happy to show you guys like what he what we've worked on and what he does um and these are just you know it's just fun fun things uh, he absolutely loves it and most dogs enjoy clicker training because uh it's not obedience you don't have to do it uh you know it's not like okay it's not discipline oriented uh-huh um and you know uh, and i i always say good dog training it should always be a mix of both um it should always be you know where you're motivating the dog to do things at the same time you know you should be able to go into discipline mode where you have to let the dog know that hey no 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 like this is not acceptable or this is acceptable but at the same time you should be the most fun person for the dog can you uh, can you for 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 the benefit of our audience can you please talk a little bit about clicker training and what exactly that is and if you have Absolutely. it if you have something absolutely give me a minute let me just i'm going to grab a clicker 
Sure. Guys, thank you so much for all your questions. We, uh, Mitali uh, is going to uh, show us a little bit of uh, <laughs> uh, take shit back. So why don't you show us a little bit of your the clicker trading uh, that you have? Uh, Absolutely. Okay. So this is what a clicker is. And I, I think a lot, I have got a lot of DMs uh, in my in my personal chat as well. Uh, uh -huh. Oh, my, my mother-in-law is here, by the way. Hi, mom. <laughs> it's really sweet that she's there. Uh, so, um, so this is what a clicker is. Um, and a lot of people have been asking me about it and I feel like I've replied to one or two, but I just don't want to like say the same reply. So I'm glad that everyone's here and I can answer this here. Um, so what it basically does is it's got this button and it makes a particular sound um, that I will, I don't want to make the sound right now. I will make it and you'll hear it very soon because Norman's sleeping and uh, I'm, I try and be as consistent as I can with him. So I don't want to actually click the clicker while he's not performing a behavior that I want him to. Um, so it makes, makes a sound. And what a clicker basically does is, uh, what the click sound basically does is it takes, um, I would say, a mental picture and a mental screenshot in the dog's mind of uh -huh. the behavior that he is performing when the click sound is made. So okay. if that makes sense, um, so for example, if he's putting his paw in a particular position and I click at that point of time, it takes a mental, mental picture in his mind for him saying, oh, when the click sound came, the action that I was performing is what she wants. Okay. Um, and that's basically how it works. Um, I have actually, I, I think my appreciation for the clicker has grown leaps and bounds in the past three months. Um, I did use, so, so basically what clicker training is also called marker training in the dog training world. Uh, but what I have, I ha I did use market training in the past and all my clients that are here know this. I've always used market training while training. Uh, but instead of the click sound, I actually used to say yes. Um, so, you know, at the point where the dog did something right, I would say yes, yes, yes. And basically the dog understands that, oh, whenever she says yes is when, you know, I'm, I, I'm doing something right that she wants me to do. Um, though I, the only thing that I think I've realized with, the clicker is uh, number one, which is also why I still would recommend using yes rather than the clicker for for maybe a few people is because your uh, reflexes have to be really, really good. Um, yeah. and this is this is a very, very important tip here, guys. Dogs have a 1.3 second associative memory. What I mean by that is, for example, if he performs a particular behavior, I have to click the clicker within 1.3 seconds of him of him performing the behavior for a dog to make the connection between the behavior and my clicker. Okay. So um, I have had, I, I did use the clicker at one point of time with some of my clients and I think, you know, and it took again, guilty of this as well. It took me, it took me a while as well to be like, Oh, okay. He's doing this. Okay. I have to find my clicker. Okay. I have to click the button. Um, you know, and it's not always, it, it's, I'm so used to this now, but that's also because I do this for a job. Um, but you know, it's, ah. it's important that I would still recommend a lot of you guys using yes, uh, or using some kind of verbal, uh, cue or verbal marker. Uh, if you just cannot, not everyone has to use a clicker. It's not you know, so the end so of can, can you show yeah. us, Vitali, for I think since we spoke a lot about it, can you just yeah. give us an example of uh, of clicker training? And sure, absolutely. Okay. Normie, do we want to wake up? Hold up, let me just. I'm going to put you on a on a tripod, Nami. Uh -huh. Guys, we have a lot of questions coming. Uh, I apologize for not taking them immediately. We I know, but I guess I'm. Uh, I, let's I, have I, a look I, at Vitali display this, and look then it. we'll come back to your question. Please hold on. Somebody dragging his tail. Oh How God. old is Norm? <laughs> Hi, Normie. Hi, baby. Uh, okay. I hope you guys can see this. Okay. Hold up. So, uh, also, can you hear me, guys? I can, we can hear you. Okay. So, Norman is an extremely clicker savvy dog. What I mean by that uh, is he, the minute he sees the clicker, uh, he will start offering all the behaviors that he knows because he absolutely loves clicker training. So... That's right. Can you see me now? We can. Okay. Okay. So, um, simple things. I have the clicker in my hand. Um, so there's a few things that he does know already, uh, which is saying uh, a high, which means like he waves with his hand. He's a little bit clearly out of sleep right now, but let's see what he has to do. Hi. Good boy. Good job. Good job. So I've worked on this behavior more, and he knows. Exactly the point where I did you guys hear a click? Yes, we did. Yeah. Hi. Good job. Good. Very nice. Good boy. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just I I actually I don't even know if you see me clicking because it's really really. We, we can uh, we can see you. We can see you, Matandi. Yeah. Good job. Okay. So another thing that he does that that's what I mean by he just loves offering the behavior now because he thinks I'm gonna click at some point in time. Uh, another behavior that he calls a spin. Good job. Very nice. Good boy. Your question. Turn. So. Well. So that is a spin versus a turn. So it's, his spin is basically you turn to the left side, and his turn is um is basically spin. Good job, good boy. Good Guys, job. Guys, you see, Ali is displaying some of her clicker training uh, uh, tips, and uh, it's very important. It's a very positive method. And I know a lot of oh, people absolutely. have questions. Oh, absolutely! Actually, the most fun. One of the fun things that I'm teaching him right now, actually. um which i've been wanting to post a video about is i the trick that i want to get to eventually is i want to have like a small little uh, either his food bowl or like a tiny little box and i want to get him to put all four of his balls in the box and stand in it um so i actually started with this long box and a big box um and he's at the point where he knows that once all his four balls are on it is when uh, he gets click so for example i could put this here And so, as soon as his fourth ball touched the box, is when I click. Uh, when I started this behavior, he definitely did not know what. And and this video is going to be up on my Instagram very soon. Uh, so I just threw a treat there. Um, so I started with a big box, and then. Good job. So as soon as his fourth ball touches the box, and all four balls on it. Um so yesterday I actually switched to like a smaller box uh cuz I want to reduce the size slowly 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 once he gets the concept of it. So when I started this um So he's still learning this we just started this yesterday. Did you guys see that? Fantastic! Great job, Norm. Good boy. So he basically now I'm working on him because it's not an easy trick because he has to like really adjust all four of his limbs and put them in the box together. Uh, so it definitely takes a lot of limb awareness from the dog. But it, this is also a great exercise um, to work on uh, a dog's awareness and uh, work on a dog's muscles. So, uh, Mital, this would be something more advanced, would won't you say? Um, honestly, it, it really depends on like I've had pet parents who've been who've really enjoyed uh, training in general. So I wouldn't say it's advanced. It's of course depends on how uh, how much your dog is really I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I meant like what? I I meant like this particular uh, uh, situation, like that this particular thing that you're doing right now to make him sit in. Uh, in a smaller the box. box. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I would say it is something that's uh I would say a little bit it is a little bit advanced it's not the easiest trick. Uh he also knows a bunch of other uh fun tricks as well. So I'm this trick is still a work in progress. I've been working on it for about 3 days now. Um uh -huh. and it's been coming along pretty 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 well. I'm going to show you another quick trick that he does. Uh, as well. Hold on to your questions, guys. We'll come back to them. Jump, good boy. Good jump. So the minute his front two paws, he does, he makes the decision to jump. Is when I click. Come jump. Good jump. I don't know if you can hear the click sound, uh, but jump. Good jump. So he I does think. a lot. He, he, I'm walking. Jump. Good job. Good boy, buddy. Good boy. Good boy, Norman. Yes. Yeah. Okay, you want to share? Good job, Norman. This is Uh Mitali so, uh, wanted to ask us you want to take some uh, time and uh, let's it's it's great that you showed us this and uh, yes. uh there, I'm back. There, 
<laughs> so uh, obviously, uh, I request all of our viewers who uh, have joined us uh, to contact Mitali directly, and she can give her uh, ideas that she can help you guys in clicker training. As she displayed that it's a very positive technique, and she really believes it, uh, uh, and she swears by it, and it's something that she can help you learn. Is this something you learnt in America? Or is there something you've been working on? Um, no, not really. I always knew, like I always knew about it, but my appreciation for it has definitely gone more. Um, uh -huh. And I think the, but again, like I said, it's not for everyone. It doesn't, it doesn't mean like you have. It's not a, you know, you have to train with a clicker, or, or you know, you can't train, or you're not a good trainer, or whatever. It's it. it a lot of people do not use it. Uh, I personally, like I said, I used to use the word yes before. Uh, the only reason why I think uh, I would train my own dog with the clicker versus yes is because I think yes is a word that's thrown around a lot, you know, by people that come home, guests, family. We just say yes so often, um, and that kind of dilutes the value of it. So that's the only reason why I think a click sound is not something a dog hears very very often. So great, yeah. fantastic. So let's let's answer some of the questions we have. I'm sorry, I'm going to uh, skip a few questions. I apologize. Please put them in again because there's lots of them. Uh, there yeah. is someone. It's just let's start with something simple. Uh, is it uh, is training a, a dog in his later years and her later years possible or not? Absolutely. Possible? Well. Uh... Like I said, Norman is, I don't know how later, what, what you mean by later, but uh, Norman is four years of age. He had no training whatsoever. Like when I say no training, he could not even walk on a leash three months ago. Um, and he was to how pull old me is Norman? everywhere. Norman is four. Four years. So he is, uh, yeah. in, uh, he is still a fairly young dog. Uh, but yeah. he's not a he's not a puppy, and he hasn't got he did not get the right socialization or the right kind of. Training. He has, yeah. He's he clearly he was a dog that was going to be put down at some point of time. Uh, okay. But you know, it, it's he's um, he had a, a, I wouldn't say a fair amount. He used to get very stressed around other dogs uh, before when I met him. Uh, he also had like. Again, no idea of how to walk on a leash. Uh, he had no clue on how, you know, he basically had, he was completely. And so firstly, uh, I would say not like he didn't have any training. He probably had like a really bad, bad experiences with uh, in the past as well. So, uh -huh. yeah, but it's, it's absolutely possible. I think the only thing, and I always say this, training your dog is all about consistency and patience, consistency and patience, consistency sure. and patience. And um, that's the most important thing. Okay, let's move on to another question. Hippie Moonlight <laughs> could be a fan, another fan of yours. I said her four-year-old GSC German Shepherd absolutely hates the strays in, uh, in her area. Uh, she feels that uh, the strays and, and something get too excited when they see me her and my dog hates okay. it he gets aggressive and wants to pounce and okay. them and pulling and pulls the leash can you give some suggestions um so uh hey hippie by the way yeah we we, we do chat pretty often she's one of my followers I, I um, had a so, <laughs> so uh what i would definitely say is um uh, number one you really need to work on uh, your basic obedience uh, without any dogs around and that's the most important thing is I would work on him walking on a leash and you know healing with you or walking with you uh, without any distractions first because that's the most important then you can start adding one one distractions as you go I would again once again use very very high value uh, treats so for example even with Norman so in the house I can just use his dog food and that's absolutely fine um, but you also have to remember that um, your the dog food or your kibble is not going to compare to like the smell of another dog's pee or you know all of these stray dogs coming up to you um, you know there's no comparison so you have to go up in your motivation which is your uh, the kind of treats that you use along with the distractions that are there as well um, so one thing that I do do is like for example uh, Norman gets um, say sausages or cheese or um, I even do like you know I, I, I use all kinds of I use fish I use uh, liver like all different types of really really high value treats but he de never gets them in the house he only gets them when we're outside on our walk and there are all of these distractions and I ask him to listen to me at that point of time and mm -hmm. he knows it so he knows that oh, okay if there's one chance for me to earn all these like really yummy treats it's now or I'm not going to get them. That's a great, uh, great tip. You know, as you're saying this, I'm giving treats to Pasha free. Like he's just not doing anything. So this is a great learning experience for me. He's looking. If you, I'll turn the camera in a bit and I'll show you. He's just looking instead. Yes. 
<laughs> and I just want his attention. So, and uh, all I'm doing is showing the treats to him. That's what I've been doing for the last half an hour, forty-five minutes. Let's move on. You know, a lot of people have asked a similar question about, uh, and I think this kind of answers another question. How can I stop uh, Angel from swelling the car tires? Like a bit is okay, but when it when does it get? Sorry, too much? one second. I I did not. I missed that question. Give me a minute. There, Hold on. I think you're a, like fixing it. A, uh, let me. Let me tag it so then you can. Uh, it's a, it's a very similar uh, uh, answer, I would imagine. Oh yeah, okay. How can I stop Angel from smelling the car tires? Uh, like a little bit is okay, but but when it goes too much, it's it is not okay. Um. So again, I um I I'm I'm sure I, Mrunal. I know you've seen Norman, uh, me and Norman training because I know Mrunal. Uh. But I think the most important thing that I I work with him is I give him commands. So for example, uh, when he's on a free, which is F R W E, um, he knows that he it's okay for him to like smell the ground, smell the uh you know smell the environment and you know be that that and that's when i'm like okay this is okay now uh but as soon as he's in an uh in a heel command uh which i give him the command at that point of time it's like hey no all attention on me you're going to watch me at this point of time i need your undivided attention and there is just no way that you're not not allowed to smell anymore but it's again it's again a fair game and throughout my walk with him every single day um i he knows that they're going to be both sides so there are going to be times when i'm like hey okay go crazy go smell that's absolutely fine when when you are in a free you can do whatever you want to but when you are in a heel you're supposed to just watch me and all attention on me um but i would also personally start um having said that the the when i did start working with him and he was i would say Uh, he always thought or uh, always used to being in a free and doing walking the way he wants to uh, i had very strict rules with him so at the minute he would pull towards a car tire i would immediately turn the direction and go the other way wherein he okay. knew that okay every time i pull a certain way she just turns around and walks the opposite direction and never get to go to it um and eventually he learned that okay let me just like go where she's going uh, it was almost like there were times when he would look at me like oh my god this woman is so indecisive she doesn't know where she wants to walk like i would just be constantly changing directions when i started leash walking also i know there are leash walking questions so this is your answer to the leash walking questions yeah. um is if you want to get your dog to start walking with you properly remember the biggest reward for a dog when it's pulling on the leash is nothing else but going in that direction um once you take that reward away which is the minute your dog starts pulling i literally hit the brakes on and i move in an opposite direction uh -huh. um also i don't keep my pattern predictable i will keep switching my pattern wherein almost my dog at some point of time is just like where does she want to go i have no idea fine let me just follow her anyway cuz clearly she doesn't know where she wants to go and then the minute my dog makes that decision of following me i'm like okay yes buddy now now you can get treats and you get rewarded for this and that's a good good thing um but yeah that's that that should uh, any of you that have leash walking questions unpredictable walking patterns the minute your dog starts pulling in a particular direction he does not get to go in that particular direction so there you have it guys and also uh, as i can uh, tell and i've seen your uh, your instagram uh, account so you have a lot of these sorry your, your 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 i couldn't hear you uh, karan your voice is can, can you hear me now okay yes so so you have a lot of these videos uh, of you actually uh, showing these techniques on your channel on your uh, on your on your instagram account if i'm not mistaken so yes uh, i do i i so i do uh, well i don't necessarily show that okay this is how you do it uh, but i definitely have like okay this is what we did today this is how we train uh etc -huh. uh, etc cetera, et cetera. so perfect so i request all of our viewers to go ahead and uh, sorry i ahead. you're going off again cannot are we having technical difficulties oh, yeah. guys can you hear me now I cannot hear you, Karan. Sorry. How about now? Yeah, that it's still slightly better, but it's still like, yeah, yeah. Now I can see you. Okay. Yes. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, move on uh, to some more questions uh, because we have a lot. Uh, there is uh, the paper parachute. Sounds like another fan of yours. Uh, is saying that uh, I have to take my dog for potty outside the society only, but because he doesn't do it inside for some reason and there's a lockdown do you have any suggestions about how people can do uh, deal with the toilet issues that a dog will have during the lockdown in india so uh, also i see that she says he's losing a lot of hair uh, well number one like i personally don't think that the potty or the losing hair are both 
interconnected i think there's two separate reasons for that uh, completely uh, uh-huh. but um, i would definitely say number one is um, <laughs> it's 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 funny because it's actually a good problem to have uh, is if my dog actually does not go in like the spot which is inside the society i would be very very happy um, so it's almost like you're breaking a good toilet training habit uh-huh um so so that's something i would uh so in if i had to answer that question i would say d- number one depends on how your how old your dog is because the older the dog the more bladder control he has or she has uh mm-hmm. but what i would personally say is in if your dog is older and he clearly can hold it in because you're saying he doesn't go uh, in your society unfortunately at that point of time i'm just going to use you know wait him out that's the only that's the only thing i'm going to do is it's going to say hey you don't have an option buddy you got to go in here uh it might take a little bit of time i have actually and again people who who followed me on instagram know that i have had some really hard toilet training dogs uh where and i've stood downstairs in building societies for 3 hours or more uh you know wow. just sitting and waiting a dog out because they just are so used to um going into one spot of the house or one surface on the house um and that's that's why we which is also why all of my clients know that i always recommend uh the puppy to have uh to know that okay when you're in the house you go in this particular spot but i always recommend that since a young age they start taking the dog down to a particular area which is sterile where they know that there are no you know unvaccinated dogs going uh so that the dog automatically learns from a young age that okay it's okay for me to go down here as well the biggest problem that people face is when they only train their dogs to go in one spot of the house and then suddenly they wait until the last vaccination which is like four and a half months the dog is actually so well potty trained that it thinks it's not okay to go anywhere else uh but that one spot of the house uh-huh. uh so it's important to you know teach both the spots uh also another toilet training mistake this is another toilet training question so uh to paper parachute to answer your question you're just going to have to wait him out um and give him no choice but to go in the building compound at that point of time uh but um to answer a toilet training question how dogs learn toilet training is all about surfaces um so for example if you teach the dog so it's all about how a particular surface feel on the feels on the paw so uh you know a, pu- a puppy pad feels different to grass feels different to soil um and dogs learn that okay it's okay for me to go and relieve myself on this particular surface but it's not okay for me to go relieve myself say on the marble or on the tile or etc um which is why it's really important to um you know use and and which is also why i think that's another thing that i've learned uh by being here is that i think i'm going to refrain from using potty you know we get those potty pads or toilet pads when i go back um is because they mimic a lot of other surfaces in the house so for example ah. like carpet or you know your bed sheet or etc so i will actually it's easier if you use say fake grass or you know have like a grass patch or a soil patch in your house in a particular area because that way you're making that association towards the the surface very very quickly and easily uh because i do have I, i do i have had clients in the past where uh they're doing you know toilet training say either on on um uh you know either on newspaper or either not newspaper is not as easy to confuse but like say you know the potty pads that we get um or say a bed sheet or something and then they're wondering why their dog is having accidents all over the house uh, it's because these surfaces are very easy to confuse with that potty pad or with that blanket great so uh, so you uh, you speak a lot about uh, for, uh, surface areas and sorry you are cutting out again karan hold up give me a minute can you hear me now yeah just give me a minute let me see if my changing position uh, i don't know if it's like my network issue or like your network issue i'm just trying to figure it out hold up so uh, mm-hmm. uh so for yeah. our viewers uh, we are uh, also for you uh, with us that we are all, we are reaching an hour so what might happen is instagram might want to cut us off so if that happens guys there's a okay. bunch of questions so if you guys do sign in again please do ask those questions again i will be happy to answer them and have them yes guys be back and ask me those questions again i will answer those questions so uh, yeah so uh, vitali you'll have to if we get cut off by instagram it's going it's probably imminent now because we are reach approaching an hour okay. that happens please do call me back okay. and uh, we will restart okay. this session when 
if and when that happens let's let's go directly into another question by anara jain and i i'm glad that uh, they asked this question because i was going to ask you this uh, after our discussion yesterday about how do you go about picking a dog so the reason i asked you this uh, or a puppy and and how do you, how do you go about picking a dog yes now before i i'll, I'll expand on that question uh their, their question is that they, ha- they how is the multi as a bra- breed Sorry, for hold on. i cannot uh hold up a minute give me a minute what i'm going to about now can you hear me yes can you yeah you... i i can hear you mitali yeah yes okay so An- anara has asked how how is the maltese as a breed for my teenage daughter and or, or would you suggest a golden retriever can you hear me now okay yes i can so basically the choice is between a maltese and a golden retriever for their teenage daughter and they have a quite a big house um, so okay. as you answer that question can you also talk about what to look out when you get, getting a dog uh, Uh, and uh, you know we did touch up a little bit about the responsible breeder part yesterday maybe you can uh, when we had a conversation maybe you can expand on that right now absolutely uh, so a uh, number one is uh, hi anara uh, i would definitely uh, and i think if there's if there's one thing that i always say is i have seen the best labradors and the worst labradors i've seen the best german shepherds and the worst german shepherds um it, and i'm i'm just it honestly i i firstly think it's and today where like breeding is just so horribly horribly done uh, especially in our country all the more and well worldwide um i firstly do not think that uh, there is any more like this breed is is going to be your sure shot answer uh, uh-huh. to having a good dog uh, it all boils down to every individual dog um so if you're looking at a maltese that's definitely a good option a shih tzu is a good option having said that again a golden retriever is a good option too but i think there are a few things that you need to boil uh, you know kind of write down is uh, number one you know look at what what size of dog you're looking at because a maltese and a golden retriever are two completely different sizes so what is your personal preference in terms of the size um and i always say you know research the breed as to what uh, so for example like terriers for, for example a lot of people think they're like small and cute um but they're extremely high energy dogs and it's important important to remember that like any of the any of these terriers are ratting breeds so their job used to be to actually dig and kill kill rodents and rats and that takes a lot of energy uh, so a lot of lord terriers have like digging problems and then you know clients come to me saying my dog is digging up my house and the first thing i always say well you have a terrier and that is exactly what they're meant to do yep. uh, but i think you know that the the research that goes into getting a breed um needs to be done definitely needs to be done and then the most important thing is it does not matter what breed you get it matters of course it matters what breed you get but i'm saying once you narrow it down uh, just because you are going to get a golden retriever does not mean it's going to be the best ideal golden retriever it completely depends on uh, multiple factors number 1 is genetics um it depends on who the parents of the dogs are um it's actually funny because uh, people just don't understand this but genetics transfer onto the puppies so for example if you are going to have uh if say you know i have a dog that uh is extremely fearful of people uh are fearful of dogs or is has aggression and i breed from that dog there is a more likely chance that the puppies are going to have the same kind of issues um so it's important to understand that and which is why uh, a good breeder would actually make sure that they do not breed from a dog that has any kind of physical or behavioral issues uh, unfortunately today the breeding industry is extremely unethical and a lot of breeders out there are just about the money which is why it's important up to us and Uh, you know it's important for us to do our research so i would always ask to go and meet the parents of the puppy say you know what i want to meet them i want to see them don't be in a hurry whatsoever do not order a puppy online um you know make sure you go meet them uh, i do understand like sometimes there are clients of mine who you know want to get a puppy but the puppy is not in the same city uh, uh-huh. and i do understand that because you know a good breeder is not always going to be in the same uh, same city 
and this is not just about breeding this is even about rescue dogs um unfortunately a lot of Uh, rescues and shelters do not do something called, which i always stress on which my followers know is called temperament and temperament testing um and that's something that needs to be done by every single shelter because at the end of the day it's it's a match making game you have to make sure that the right dog is matched with the right family um and a lot of times it could be a great dog and it could be a great family but they're just not meant to be you know it's just not a good match or it's just not a good fit um and that's that's really really important to remember so i would say anara to answer your question specifically uh make sure that wherever you're getting your dog from um you know if you're getting it from the breeder ask to see the parents um another important tip that i always uh I, that i would give is in terms of breeding if you're looking at um a breeder remember the first your first red flag is a breeder who has all kinds of breeds available so if a dog, if a guy says oh okay if you want a german shepherd i can get you a german shepherd if you want a maltese i can get you a maltese that is your first red flag because <clears throat> most good breeders are actually in love with one particular breed and they will only breed the best kind of that one particular breed uh, so it's important to remember that so if somebody says oh i have all breeds available that's the not the person you should be getting your dog from number 1 because people specialize and they actually love the breed and are doing it for because they want that breed to be you know alive and meet its standards uh second thing is of course meet the parents um you know make sure that he says okay even if you cannot meet the parents ask for videos to see the parents see how the parents are uh you know are they well taken care of are they uh you know do you see any kind of limping any health issues uh because that's on your on to your puppy that you get at that point of time um and that's really important to remember uh again you know if you can meet the parents and look at their behaviors um ask for you know ask for medical history of the parents because it really really boils down to that uh also in terms of a good breeder you will definitely know uh you know as much as so again this is unfortunately does not happen in india as much but a good breeder will actually not let you take your pick of the litter which I I feel like I've never seen that ha- like I've never seen a breeder which I'm still waiting to see in India who will say that hey hey no 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 it's not your choice what what are you as a family what is your activity levels what are your requirements and then he will know which puppy is kind of fitting that requirement um another thing that I I generally see a lot is all of us go a lot on looks where in like oh my god this dog looks so pretty or his color markings are so nice um etc which is something that you should not be doing because in the long run honestly looks do not matter you might have the most beautiful dog uh, but if he has health issues and aggression issues um extremely extremely stressful um, so remember, remember even if the dog is not the best looking dog but is a very very sweet tempered dog that's the dog i would go for that this all great advice mitali thank you so much i am back <laughs> yeah so just uh, before I'm, i don't know if, by the way guys i am really enjoying this if you guys are not getting like i'm sure <laughs> i'm sure you guys are getting that vibe anyway i can talk about dogs for days and years <laughs> um so i am i do get carried away at times but i'm trying my best to answer everyone's questions <laughs> we're very happy to have you with us mitali thank you so much for taking the time especially it's early morning for you over there Uh, it's actually nine thirty now. We've been at it for nine for an hour, and Instagram okay. tried to cut us off. Unfortunately, uh, what has also happened is that we've lost a bunch of questions from our viewers, uh, and yeah. all of them are joining us again right now. So let's send uh, in your wait. questions again, guys. Uh, and so, yeah. Okay. So we have a question. This question was there before by. Shania Menzen <laughs> Menzes yeah how did you train a normal to get a beer from the fridge actually that's a good question so um i norman is actually not trained to get the beer from the fridge it was fury uh, who was trained to get a beer he was my uh, current since you don't know he was my other rescue dog uh-huh. on the course um so um he got adopted uh he was actually a a, a handicap dog and he had one eye um and we did a bunch of training with him and he, again you know i i feel like which is why i like if anyone that asks me a question saying can any dog be trained i now have a whole different appreciation for it, literally any dog being trained um you just need to have lots of patience but uh shall i to answer your question so um now 
what so there are different kinds uh, i would say i would break that into what getting a beer from the fridge it was basically something called a chain behavior um so when i when i say a chain behavior it's a bunch of tricks that he already knew that would chain together into like one particular behavior so for example um the sorry i got a, i got a call there my bad okay so the first thing i uh, trained him to do was number one i taught him the pull command which is to pull on a particular cloth so he knew that command really really well uh, then i taught him the fetch command so I, he knew how to fetch me something when i asked him to so that was the second command that i taught him and then the third command was something called the touch command which is actually uh, honestly really easy to teach a dog so I, you can use anything i started with my hand norbert knows it too but i started with my hand and then i also used um, i used actually a fridge magnet in that particular uh, instant where in i teach the dog to just touch it with his nose so every time he touches it with his nose i click i click i click i click i click so he knew all three of these behaviors um, individually and separately really really well so you would i would not start you know again get a beer from the fridge unless my dog knows these three behaviors separately really well and then i started putting them together where and i would put the cloth on the fridge handle and i would ask him to pull on the fridge handle then every time he pulled and opened the fridge is when i would say okay you know i would click for that and reward him click for that and reward him then i started putting you know the particular can um in the in the fridge and i would you know have the dog go in and so i would do fetch from the fridge fetch from the fridge fetch from the fridge. it was a very I, again whoever saw me teach him that behavior knew how long and patience how much patience it took how long, how long did it take do, you to do that mitali um so individually i think the tricks uh, individually uh, oh, like you pull you the entire chain together how long the entire that... chain together took me about uh, six days i think oh wow so that um, that is much sooner than i anticipated Yeah but that's also because I was literally working with working on it with him like five to six times a day. Ah okay let's move on because so, this is something which is a very advanced uh trick uh and it's yeah. a lot of patience and a little bit experience by the handler themselves. Um well okay but but to end that trick I I literally just put the fridge fridge magnet on the fridge okay. and then I taught him to touch it on the fridge and then I just put it all together and it was really really simple and then you just kept practicing over and over again. So yeah Okay so uh, you know uh, there's a question that maybe you're in a very good position to answer that it's by Tanushri uh, Tan- Tanushri Vigal Vagle Vagle Hold on I'll answer I'm sorry Did for saying say... people's names guys I apologize can you suggest not... for aspiring dog trainers uh, what is the best path within India uh... Maybe you can speak a little bit about your own experience about starting off As a, okay, hold up. Let me just. Oh, I I did not see the question. But okay. I just um. <clears throat> guys, we're having some I technical difficulties. Personally, the best path within India would be. Uh, I think there are. I think there are three ways to do it in India. Is number one, I think they do have an army. Uh, like an army school as well that does, but you have to be a part of. uh the the forces in order to actually be a dog trainer and a handler there then there's of course Shirin Merchant which is the way I started with immense respect immense respect for her um and uh this I I actually started with uh her you know her courses uh what I personally would say is this is how I would do it is I would do a basic course with Shirin um and then actually cuz I think a lot of people make the mistake of you know doing like basics advanced advanced all together and then like suddenly they go into you know the working industry um and realize this is not cut out for them uh because and i i've said this a million times whoever knows me and i've always said this is dog training is not about is very little about the dog but it's all about training the human that has the dog it's always about training the human that has the dog because you are never going to see results if the humans Uh, at home who have the dog actually do not follow what you say yeah. so um that's extremely extremely important the dog and, and i always say this training the job is training the dog is a 10 minute or 5 minute job for me but training the humans is a 15 minute job <laughs> and we always laugh about this um but
can i do not have to give in and in fact most of the times you do not have to give in to your urges of you know doing what the dog wants you to do um you know a lot of times you have to be like even even a simple thing that i'm i'm doing right now is because and i think people in the lockdown uh, extremely important for you because you're spending so much time with your dogs at home right now um unfortunately what's going to happen is as soon as this lockdown is being lifted and you go back to work uh, you do not want your dog to suddenly have anxiety of being away from you because the dog is so used to being with you um so you know literally like yesterday and i i'm i'm trying to do this every single day because i'm spending so much time with norman here um so i i honestly just go into like one of the rooms and he tries to follow me in there and I actually shut the door on him and i go and sit in that room for at least about 20 to 30 minutes um yesterday he whined a little bit outside the door and it is very hard because i definitely want to open the door and bring him in and you know uh but i know that any sort of anxiety is not good for him in the long run as much as we love it i think humans love the fact that our dogs get anxious when you know they're like oh my god my dog loves me so much uh but you have to be rational when and it's not good for your dog it's not good for your dog to be stressed and anxious um which is why i actually will stress on teach your dog to be independent teach your dog to enjoy his or her own time uh don't let your dog be over attached and over clingy to you because it's not good for your dog um so i've actually been working on him of just having him you know in a different room while i'm still in the house because i know at some point of time when i go back to normal life he's going to have to deal with that uh so that's important but to answer your question again there i would actually do a basic course and then work and start working and see if this is meant for you before you put in more time and money uh into the profession uh because i know uh, even in, so even in my batch or even um uh, even in my, in the academy that i was here right now and even our instructors always kept saying they were like a batch of 20 or 25 graduate and within about 3 to 4 years we only have 3 or 4 people that are actually pursuing this as a career because it's not meant for everyone that's uh, very well said uh, uh, mitali you know and you also kind of answered in the second question that uh, yash malhotra had about separation anxiety and these are all techniques yeah. that people can uh, employ so that kind of helps me out with that question also so hopefully uh, yash if you have something more specific you can ask dm metali directly and she'll be happy to help you out yeah uh, let's get directly into another question uh uh, uh sorry one second so one more somebody else has a question about separation anxiety um again remember if you have a puppy teach your puppy to spend time by itself so uh i create training is a great 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 tool uh you know actually teach your dog to stay in the crate give your puppy and dog lots of bones and things to do in the crate so they actually enjoy being by themselves don't constantly coddle your dog and that's one of the most important tips i would give you for separation anxiety or anxiety in general is teach your dog to enjoy his own time that you know that can uh, hits uh, quite close also because uh, when i got pasha in 2012 uh you know i always wanted to do uh crate training i believed in it and uh and i had a lot of difficulty and because i didn't know how to uh work with a dog that well it took uh, me 3 years to actually up uh, actually 4 years and after that we finally got a crate and we got partial to sit in it after doing a lot of yes. positive uh uh yes uh, and it was not like you don't lock the dog in there the dog should want to go into the crate so absolutely now, Pasha, absolutely uh, and you know it's getting a bit hot these days in uh, in delhi but uh, you know before that uh, in the winter pasha would go in and go directly to his crate and he would sleep in the crate in the night and i wouldn't even yeah. have to close it like he would he would enjoy spending time over there now yes. uh, it's getting a little warm so we trying to figure out things we had the air conditioning on and all that so then it kind of works out but uh, i i really believe in crate training it's very it's a very safe environment for the dog and dogs love it so that's one great way to uh, absolutely i think my anxiety. that's another thing i think i would want to it's a you know in fact i it's great that all of y'all are here because a lot of people i do get questions about like oh my god is your dog in a cage or oh, is there like you know and i think people have that sort of uh thing that the the, the crate is like a, a punishment or like a, a cage for the dog um so number one is is i would definitely say um and I, i've actually i'm i'm reiterating my my recent instructor who is an absolute you know inspirational man uh but like he always says and he 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 said this and he said he said can you guarantee that your dog is not going to be in a crate or like a cage 
once for the rest of his life can you guarantee that you're not going to have to admit your dog to a hospital at some point of time can you guarantee and he said if not even talking about any of that you know can you guarantee that you're not leaving your dog in a um, dog is going to be like stuck in a small environment for a long period of time and he was like i rather train my dog to be happy uh, and to enjoy his own space and his own time which is the crate since a young age than have this you know one day have him just like put in a crate in a time where i'm not around um and that's one really really good way how he puts it uh and i completely agree with that um and also like i and you I, whoever knows and has seen norman's crate training he he busts into his crate and he loves being in there um and it, it a crate should never be used as a punishment it should always be used as a space which is like the dog's own bedroom pretty much where it's like okay you go and you enjoy your own time in your own bedroom and that's how it should be i think that's uh, these are great points harsh is asking about a database for trainers it's a new profession i would imagine in india and people have just uh, woken up to the idea that uh, they then self need training with their dog you have any suggestions where yeah. one pe- where people can find you know uh, before you do answer that uh, mithali i would like to add in here that you know at dogspot we are trying to put together a database of all the oh that's awesome trainers. okay trainers and that's why we have people like mithali we had adnan chetna mira uh, pranita here last week and uh, you guys if you follow our uh, instagram account you'll keep seeing these people and uh, these experts in addition to other experts in different uh, fields so please stay tuned we have someone coming uh, an expert coming every day so and they'll be you know be it a vet be it for, uh, uh, for nutrition and uh, so you, you know this is a great place for you guys to get that information but mithali do you I have agree, i think I, i'm i i i definitely do know that shirin has a database of her students uh and i know that and i am I'm, i'm actually really happy that you are putting up uh putting in you know putting up a database of trainers that you know which is uh absolutely you know uh which is absolutely great uh having said that again like i always say every trainer is different guys and uh no matter where you get the person from it's always important on what sort of comfort level you feel with that particular trainer um and you know what sort of training techniques the trainer is using uh you know so and, and is it working for your particular dog um so you know even if and i i always say this you know if i cannot go into uh for a particular training session um and it's just not possible for me uh, i will always tell uh, the person saying look these are a few numbers that i am sending in uh but again you know speak to each one of them see who you you feel the most comfortable with because just because i recommend someone that not that doesn't mean that you will be the most comfortable with that person um so that's that of course then look at like what sort of experience they have had uh how many dogs have they trained how many different breeds because i always say this like every single breed uh you know that i i work with uh is different and and i i've always say this no two dogs are ever the same and every single dog that i work with i learn something new every single dog i work with uh, that's very well said uh, mitali we have uh, natasha over here who's asked a valid question there's something that we touched on uh, before uh, yes. with the rest of our uh, experts as well about separation anxiety post uh, this yes. lockdown do you have any tips i mean yes. we, uh, i'm sure you do so please give us some tips So uh and by, also by the way Natasha is is one of my clients and is a very dear friend as well. Uh and I have trained Nora who is an absolute gem of a dog. Uh-huh. Um uh so um personally like and I also know why she's asking this because Natasha and her are very 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 bonded and very attached. Uh Nora and her are very bonded and very attached. Uh but the only thing that I I definitely would say is um what exactly what i'm doing with norman is i know i know it's very hard because you're at home and you want to spend every single waking minute with your dog uh but it's important to um you know make sure that your dog learns that even when i'm at home it's it's absolutely fine if i'm in one room and you're in the other room and you know you're doing is your own thing uh, again crate training is very helpful in this situation because that way uh my dog is not just standing outside the room door that i'm in and whining and you know uh all of that so that way it helps because i can put you know my dog in its crate give him like a bone or something in fact i i'll show you guys i actually got these um i this is this i actually got this for this particular reason is uh i went I bought like these. Uh, what is this one? I don't know if anyone's like 
uh these are these are don't be grossed out guys but these are pig ears uh that i bought the other day that are going to take a norman some and this is i think uh like just knuckles knuckle bones which are also which take a, a while to eat and finish and i got them for norman specifically to give him in his crate because it's going to be a long consuming activity so he actually enjoys his own time in his crate for a long period of time because if you just give your dog like a quick milk bone or something he's going to be in there going to finish the bone in 5 minutes and if your dog does have anxiety he's going to go back into his anxious state um so give him something that is more time consuming in his crate or in his uh, mitali the treats that you just showed us so obviously some of them may or may not be available in india uh do you have yes. uh, uh alternatives to these um so i definitely do uh i know that we have a lot of interactive so i know we get a lot of kong toys in india for sure uh so i i do give i also give him like a kong uh the kong and so i think it's in his crate right now actually but i do give him his kong with like filled with peanut butter uh i he also has dry skin um so i give him uh, a spoon of coconut oil every day because that really helps with dry skin uh-huh. so i put like a spoon of coconut oil in there and i give him you know that um uh, but yeah i'm hoping dog spot can get all these fun treats to india as well so <laughs> so, so uh, um, when you say that please guys check out uh, dog spots uh, it's we are primary an e-commerce channel we have a lot of products some of us we are just started delivering dog food in uh, bombay and ncr uh, at the moment and uh, you guys uh, please go ahead and check it uh, as the situation develops we will be able to uh, uh, open up the rest of our inventory as well so we have treats that uh, we are working on and we and hopefully there could be something similar to what uh, mithali has showed us right now uh, do you want uh, also there is a question that i want to answer actually uh by harsh that says is there a way to shift a dog's training from treat based to praise based at a later stage uh is excessive treat training during uh training good for the dog um so harsh to answer your question uh it completely two things it completely depends on the dog uh every dog is different and every dog's motivation is different and this is something i have learned personally there are some dogs who just love praise and human contact and you know want to be petted all the time there are some dogs who honestly would not care at all you know there are some dogs who are just like okay fine just give me my food and let me go i'll do what you want me to do and every dog is a different personality um so i would personally use what motivates that dog the most um of course that like, there's always a time and place um and norman knows that as well is you know hey even if i don't have treats or something you've got to do this and there's no other way you know like there is there is definitely that time and place to to you know really let him know that hey no i asked you to do this i know i don't have treats on me that doesn't mean that you're not going to do it you've got to do it uh but when i'm in the process of training i will uh, i change my training techniques according to the dog so there are dogs that really enjoy love and praise and i would use love and praise based based training for those dogs there are some dogs who are honestly are just like please don't touch me i don't want this love and affection mm-hmm. um and in those cases i'm going to use what works best for the dog um is excessive treat training good for the dog um so again remember um again quoting quoting will here but he always says he's like he always says um no one wants to work for pennies uh and not as your dog mm-hmm. so uh you know he he'd always and he always says this is um yes there is definitely a a a, a line between like okay um you know you you're definitely and that's how i i train is like okay i asked you to do something if you do it you're going to get a treat or if you do it within the first time once he knows the behavior is when you're going to receive your reward um uh, i'm not really begging the dog to do something for me when i'm like please do it for me like please that's just not my style of training once my dog knows it it's like hey no you got to do it okay if you do it well great you have a jackpot waiting for you um but it completely depends from dogs i also recommend using the dog's food as a training um uh, as a training treat rather than constantly using extra treats um so that's that way you know if you're worried about like the dog's diet going for a toss i would recommend using the dog's food as a training method so yeah okay there you have it hey, are there any particular breeds that are easy to train than uh, than others um yeah. well honestly there's definitely you know you if you're looking at like high trainability uh you know you're definitely looking at labrador golden retrievers uh you know and then again if you're looking at 
like from a trainer's point of view i would definitely love uh, a high energy dog where i can do a lot lot of stuff with the dog so for example like a say a border collie uh, you know german shepherd but then having said that those dogs are not i would never recommend any of those dogs for like a pet parent um because they need a lot of mental stimulation and i think that's where and i'm going to touch on another topic here as well is um you know people i feel like especially in india now is you know there's there's a lot of new breed craze um and and it's important to remember that you should not get a breed just because you love the breed you know you have to think about it as to how much time do i really have to give this dog um you know just because i like a jack russell terrier i'm not going to go get a jack russell terrier just because i like like a siberian husky i might love it but then all the more why because you love the breed you have to do justice to it um mm. and that's really important you know wherein like if i was to get a dog uh, tomorrow and i always think 100000 times um before getting would think 100000 times before getting a dog uh, but it, it's like okay if i love this breed i'm actually i might not get it because um i want to do justice to the breed and the, i know the kind of level of exercise and stimulation the breed needs and maybe i might not be able to provide it so it's important to understand that and that's you know i i i really want to stress on that because i see so many people getting breeds that they just are not equipped to get oh, well there seems there's a lot of education that uh, people have to and research that people have to do before they get a breed and i think uh, uh, the the situation may be changing but probably not uh, fast enough and that's why we need people like you mitali we need people like you even adnan who's asked a, very, a question here which are, seems to be very technical and maybe you can yes. indulge him in that i knew he was going to come and do this so uh yeah you, i am not <laughs> so can you see the question over there that, uh, yes i can i can see the question and he says hey mitali it is a technical question everyone might not get it but i'm just going to answer it for adnan and he says because he's a he's a how guest. do you want and he's a, he's a one of our experts so we have to help him so yes so he says uh, how do you want the trainers to evolve here now that you're training at starmark using full operant conditioning and balance approach to tools um so number one i will definitely say adnan i went uh when i did go there i did have a very very closed mind in terms of training tools and using balance training um and i have i have to say i have my my mind's been changed for sure and i definitely think that um you know training tools if used correctly uh, and i've seen it in front of my eyes are are not really going to you know torture the dog or mm-hmm. harm the dog or anything they just they if used right they can be great communication tools uh and and norman in fact on his box is on a stama collar which is a training tool um and i i just absolutely uh, have learned so much and grown so much uh having said that i think the problem with uh with using training tools and and uh, the reason i think a lot of them a lot of training tools have uh been a looked down upon about you know like trainers that use training tools are looked on, down upon is because of the idiots out there who use them wrong um and you know uh, uh, and like 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 we'll call them the the cranky anchors who you know do not believe in using food and do not believe in uh you know dog motivation who just believe that you've got the dog has got to do this because i said so or the dog has got to do this because i believe so um and that's such a wrong approach of uh, of training in general um uh, is is just completely wrong uh but i definitely say that that um if used correctly i have seen them transform dogs and have very very happy dogs um and that's that's been i would say that's one of the biggest areas where i have grown over the past 3 months uh and i'm glad you asked me that question we are also glad that adnan asked you that question that kind of behooves me to ask you another question uh, mostly Definitely. about since you have this new uh, grasp uh, uh, over training techniques uh, from america yeah. what are your plans yeah. when you come back to india and how are you planning to employ them over here yeah yeah um so i definitely think uh that when i come back uh there's definitely going to be uh you know and it's it's simple things you know when i think back on a few cases that i handled before i left uh especially you know like a, a few i would say i wouldn't say extreme aggression cases but a few yeah pretty much uh you know extreme dog dog aggression cases and i thought back uh on times where i was like hey you know what if i had this training tool at that point of time i would actually be able to make the this change in this dog maybe in like you know 
three weeks which took me like three months or uh you know so i definitely think that that's going to change uh in me a lot but having said that like um i i i really think and one thing that i i have learned uh for sure is a lot of precision which is exactly why i came here for is precision training uh-huh. um uh you know that that's something that i i feel like i was lacking uh and that's why i wanted to you know go abroad because yes i was a trainer but i just wanted to learn precision and uh that is something that i really really uh grew and uh i i i definitely grew in terms of like okay how do i get that dog to sit exactly within you know one inch of me and like how do i get that like attention heel and how do i get all of that so um again i i do see m- myself like doing a lot of precision based training uh but again it, you know your normal like i'm sure all of you guys really don't care if uh and most of the time not do i like if your dog is sitting within 1 inch of you or 2 inches of you uh you guys just want your dogs walking on a loose leash and to be enjoying your dog's time um so i'm happy to help whoever you know i want I, whoever needs my help uh i also see myself using a lot of uh a lot of i would say uh the dog senses in my training now so for example um uh i'm definitely you know willing to i i learned a lot of like scent work um when i was here and i also learned a lot of like um nose work while i was here and i see myself using it more for pet dogs uh i also learned a lot of agility which is a great way and whoever is you know seeing uh seen my instagram sees how fury was running through the obstacle course of agility and you know these things that um i've learned so much about i see them in, i see myself incorporating them in my clients and uh daily uh training because it's so stimulating and ha- makes just just makes a dog happy i'm ready to do whatever makes my dogs happy so yeah, yeah. so th- that th- these are all great points we're looking forward to having you back in india uh, mitalian you can have come over I know, I know. You must be missing your uh, your dog and your cat, and uh, they all must be missing you tremendously. Um, yeah. You have some fun. You know, we 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 are in it for about an hour and a half. You have some more. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll ask questions. some more questions. But uh, uh, before we do, do you have some uh, thoughts or do you have some things that you would like to impart about how should one? I'm just. I'm actually just looking at some of the questions to see. um somebody is asking keeps pulling his leash i already went over leash training uh, yeah, a little while okay, back okay let me throw one to you one. there is boy strottle has asked about in the e collar or a prong collar what are your thoughts about that where is the I okay i have not seen right it. the lock in the end so, okay thoughts, thoughts of the e collar and yeah. the prong collar um so i have uh, i definitely have seen well number one uh, i did use it on uh, one of my so okay let me go dive into like e collars and prong collars um i wouldn't say prong collars but just training tools in general um so number one when i actually went uh on the course and you know um two things that i would say about my instructors is um is their their methods of teaching were just so so uh different from what i thought it would be and the first day when uh i we actually went in uh they did you know they had a few of the training tools as we started seeing the training tools um and they actually said you know cuz you know there are all these like i read it as well i had read that you know prong collar like jabs the dog in the throat and like is going to you know hurt the dog's throat etc etc um and you know an e collar like burns the dog's neck and you know i read it all um and which is also a part of why i had not used them in the past um and you know they actually made us and i did i tried it on myself guys i tried every single training tool on myself including the e collar including the prong collar i've tried it all on myself um and actually saw the fact that oh okay this did not really jab me in my skin it did not really puncture my skin uh, unfortunately uh, the people that have seen like prong collars and and uh, e collars that have you know the pictures that are circulating there are of um, people that have left these collars on you cannot leave them on your dog for extended periods of time that is just irresponsible um so you cannot leave any training tool in fact 
um the only thing that's on norman during the day is his is his really really loose slip lead um and that's only that's the only thing that's on him throughout the day uh but i tried everything on myself because and i've always said this i will never ever put something on my dog that i am not comfortable with using on myself um and that's just that's just something i will not do um so i did use uh but again see every dog is different and you guys know this is because i actually used uh whoever followed me knew that uh, uh fury was on a slip uh, slip collar um norman is on a, on a starma collar which is like the second level of collar and choco who was my third dog uh was on a prong uh but it completely depends i don't choose the collar for the dog the dog chooses his own collar it depends on the activity level threshold the amount of communication that it takes from me uh of uh, so amount of communication differs for me like for example fury was just a very responsive dog um so even a little bit of tug on his leash should be like okay okay yeah okay i i'm i'm here i got you uh, as opposed to norman needs a little bit more of communication where he would say okay hold up like this smell is more interesting i was like no 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 hey i need your attention here uh it's as simple as that and and uh, whoever knew choco uh knew that he was a crazy man but he was the best he was such a cutie um and choco needed a prong uh, at no point am i am i hurting the dog yanking the dog around the problem uh, is the fact that all of these tools have been you know just misused by people and unfortunately there's no regulation in the dog training industry um, you know th- there's just it, it's it's sad to see uh, you know the way people use and it's not even the funny thing is it's not even about tools it's about um uh it's not even about tools it's even about your normal harnesses and your normal uh your normal uh, your normal collars you know people i see people just letting their dog like pull and pull and pull into normal collars and that's going to ruin your dog's track yeah um you know again your harnesses you see the dogs like pulling and pulling and pulling into uh you know a harness and just you know ganking into it that's going to ruin your dog's shoulder blades um so it's it's not about it's honestly not about which tool you use you could use a a, a simple flat collar Hello to a uh, uh, a prong it's about how you use it and it's up up about the dog and that's something that has been a, a massive eye opener for me for sure so mitali you know what i'm getting and this is something you already know is that it's actually not so much about what the dog uh, uh, already knows it's mostly about the trainer and the and the handler and the pet parent there's a lot of education Absolutely. that uh, the pet parent has to go through and the dog is going to respond to that education it is a, it is their responsibility the pet parent responsibility to do that research and and we are very lucky we are we what i am since uh, i have the a pleasure of interviewing people like you you guys are experts i'm seeing this big change and you know you guys have put in the hard work and you are going to be back to india soon and uh, we already yeah. have uh, about four five other six seven more experts if not more uh, on our channel before and we'll have some more in the future so you know uh, for all of you is and you have quite a bit today uh you know i you know either they they should contact you directly mitali salvi on instagram do you have any other uh, place that you are uh, you have like a website no i, I, I no i you're, you're, no. You're i think instagram. i'm most active on my instagram and honestly like I, i i was telling my husband the other day i was like i was like oh my god like when i come back there is so much i want to do in the dog training industry and in dog training stuff i was like maybe i need to like get someone to like do my instagram but like i was just thinking about that because i was like I want to like really. There's so many ideas. I'm like bursting with ideas when I come back. I'm very, very excited to be back. Well, uh, don't know when I'm going to be back. We can't wait to have you back in Delhi. I think that you have already have such a big fan base. I can tell by today's. Uh, I am really talk. excited to be back, and I, I, I think one of the reasons I love my Instagram is honestly because of the people that are there and how authentic and you know how supportive all of them are. Uh-huh. But, yeah. I yeah you know, I can tell they're all here uh, today and they have been sending messages all throughout I mean I've had trouble keeping Hi Levy <laughs> Sorry I just wanted to say hi to Lev but yeah <laughs> You there's some that is that another fan of yours I would imagine That is actually my uh my roommate and I think my 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 better half over the past 3 months Uh, um you know we we did everything together on the course she's also a fabulous trainer uh and I'm glad she's actually here to listen to me so yeah we are happy to have everybody here especially the experts so uh, mithali you know i'm going to we we are in about an hour and a half is there something you would like our viewers to know about you is there something that we have not touched on about today that uh, 
uh, because we answered there have been a lot of repeat questions. We missed out on a few from the previous conversation. Uh, yeah, I think there's one question that I wanted to talk about, like puppy socialization yeah. uh, and dog socialization. I think that's that's like a common topic that's um, a lot of times like miss uh, miss interpreted. I think a lot of people just think that it's you know it's important for dogs to spend other time with, with time with other dogs. Um, you know, so number one, it it definitely boils down to, um, and I think this is again something I feel like I've I've learned. um you know over time is the fact that it completely depends on the dog so for example if i'm going to have uh, a dog that is uh, you know like for my own dog for example she's not a dog's dog and i always say this is there could be like 20 dogs in my house and she will literally just ignore all of them and like do her own thing uh, whoever has come on my camps before knows this like they always call her the loner cuz they're like all these other dogs will be playing and she's just like off doing her own thing um uh-huh. and i have never ever really forced her uh, to spend time with other dogs whatsoever and i don't think anybody should if your dog number one is is just doesn't want to spend time with other dogs that's absolutely fine and there's nothing wrong with that um in fact your dog should only worry about or only enjoy one thing and that is your company um in fact the other the opposite side of the spectrum that i've seen is people who over socialize their dogs with other dogs um they get so used to and start enjoying other dogs company so much uh, that the human just becomes a feeding hand uh, uh which is something that you know i i see very very often is you should not um uh, you know another dog just thinks like okay well you know what this other dog is so much fun my human so boring uh and which is which is where unfortunately the, the relationship gets affected between a dog and a human uh your dog should always think that you are the most fun person on this planet and no other dog no other you know species should be able to come in between that and that's really important um uh, so anyway having said that like even and especially if you have an aggressive dog the worst thing that you can do at that point of time is actually take your dog and socialize him with more dogs because your dog is clearly telling you i do not want to see another dog or i do not like other dogs uh-huh. um and you know i see that so often when people say oh you know he just needs to be socialized he's not well socialized that's why he's like that no your dog is telling you very clearly that you do not want to that the yeah. dog doesn't want to see another dog um uh, ever probably and you should respect that decision and um uh, you know train uh, and just work on you know my dog could go without seeing another dog for the rest of her life and that's absolutely okay um uh, having so that, said that mitali hold on hold on before because that could be misconstrued you are not promoting yeah. that uh, to not socialize that the dog should not be oh, aggressive absolutely not so another thing it's not all right to ab- lunge and bite another dog that is something that you yes. that the person still has to work upon yes absolutely absolutely that is something that i would um so uh, funnily enough norman uh, here in the beginning did have uh you know uh, i wouldn't say dog to dog aggression but he did get uncomfortable around other dogs uh so he definitely used to be uh, a kind of dog and and you know that's all i had to convey to him was like hey you don't like other dogs i get it but that doesn't mean that and i will make sure that you don't have to be exposed to other dogs but that doesn't mean you take it upon is it better okay this i can now hear you sorry i lost out in the okay. last one minute of what you were saying please repeat okay. that for our viewers okay Uh no I said so generally the thing is like remember dogs will always do what works for them so if uh-huh. why does your dog lunge and bark at other dogs it's mainly generally to most of the times is to create distance so they've learned that okay if i bark and lunge at other dogs the other dog will move away or the owner of the other dog will take the dog away and that is successful um so it has to be done so of course that is diving deeper into like dog to dog aggression and how that works uh but it's important to learn that you know when uh you do do that uh and when your dog is behaving like that so for example like i basically did have to you know with dogs i will generally tell them that hey that not that's not what works anymore but it has to be done via training uh saying that okay if you don't want to meet other dogs that's absolutely fine but that doesn't mean you have to take matters in your own hands and go barking and yelling at all the other dogs uh-huh. you know it's as simple as like if you don't like somebody at a party you might just like walk across the person and ma- not make eye contact that doesn't mean you're going to walk into the party and go and punch that person in the face that's exactly yes. how i would you know compare the two things um and that's exactly what you need to teach your dog is like hey just because you don't like it that's fine and i'll make sure that you don't have to deal with this mm-hmm. but 
you have to meet me halfway and that's important um but when it comes to socialization remember the right kind of socialization is so 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 important um so for example if and i've done this with you know whoever um any of my clients that i hear they know this that uh when i do get puppies in for training um and they know this because i will actually pick and choose my adult dogs that are well behaved are you know will also are not going to like really take nonsense from the puppy like biting and chewing and you know all of that will also like let the puppy know what is allowed and what is not allowed and i will actually make sure that the puppy is socialized with only these kinds of dogs okay. who are actually well behaved and good role models uh, unfortunately you know people just think that socializing is taking your dog to a dog park and leaving it free mm-hmm. you know that's yeah. it's it's like it's like kids it's like you know it's like uh, you want your kid to to interact with the right kind of children to grow into a good human being uh-huh. uh, and that's exactly the same with dogs is you're not just going to let your kid go and like be rowdy with other kids in a, in a park and just let it do whatever it wants to do and expect it to you know be good and that's exactly how socialization works it's the right kind of socialization should be done in order for it to work you you're absolutely right and uh, you know um, there's a lot of uh, there, these are these are things that our viewers can learn from people like you you know uh, we have uh, that's why we have people like you on our channel and uh, adnan and chetna and who have you so uh, i really request uh, Uh, all of you is because there are a lot of unanswered questions over here that we couldn't get to today and it's my fault and uh, but there's so much there's such a wealth of information that mithali is uh, sharing with us uh, so i really request all the people who haven't uh, had their questions answered to please dm mithali and she'll be more than happy to first of all go and, and whoever doesn't follow her please go and follow her account and please go there and dm her and she'll be more than happy because she has a lot of time on her hands at the moment uh, for the <laughs> next uh, month or so before she comes yeah, back you to can, you guys can join me um, in fact i'm like thinking of i don't know if you you guys let me know here i've actually been thinking of like doing uh, like a live maybe not a live but like a little training session every day wherein like we because i'm teaching norman new tricks and you guys are in lockdown right. i was thinking of like we can like teach our dogs tricks together uh if you know that's that's something i was like thinking about yesterday and i was like maybe if you can teach that, this but... dog if you i'm more than happy to take part in it if you can teach this <laughs> dog he's an old dog now he's turning he's turning 8 in another 4 5 months wow and uh, pasha is a beautiful dog thank you so much he's a, he's a, he's a very beautiful dog but he is a stubborn dog and uh, he is my life so pasha you want to learn new tricks boy <laughs> he's saying uh, no that's it i know exactly what he's saying right he's saying don't disturb me anymore yeah. <laughs> but yeah uh, you know honestly uh, uh, mitali i think that's a great offer i i, I me and uh, people at dogs for we are ha- happy to take part in but i have a feeling that uh, you have a lot of viewers and all of them will be vying for your attention over there because there's so much they, they can learn and uh, let's give them that opportunity so all the people who have uh, signed in today uh, you guys have an opportunity right now to do a one on one live session with mithali and uh, yeah, and norman uh, norman is he's like having a siesta time this morning no me hi wake up yeah <laughs> so he's he's enjoying himself he's living his oh, life right now he- he's in yeah. the company uh, all right mithali so uh, thank you so much for taking the time and uh, being with us today and uh, answering all the questions and it was very oh you're welcome i enjoyed myself and I'm, i'm sure you guys saw <laughs> no I, i'm glad i'm glad and we're going to have you on again i'm sure because we have a lot of our uh, our experts i think there are a lot there are a f- quite a few unanswered questions but if you do see anyone that i don't know how much time we have left do you know how much time we have left I don't think there's a limit. I mean, I don't want to take too much of a thing. So if you find any oh questions- no, like I mean, like in the next hour is like how how long are we in into the next hour? Another ten minutes. Um, okay. So, so I was like, if you see any like really important questions, I'm happy to answer them in ten minutes. And okay, so let know, me just go ahead. So this. if you guys want to answer a few questions, the first, the next three four questions, I'm happy to answer again. Please, uh, please there's just- one question that I see here, Karan, that I was yeah. looking at answering is. how can i help a fussy eater my dog doesn't eat her food willingly and i feel like a lot of people struggle with this uh, and there's only one answer to this uh, is one we create fussy eaters uh-huh. a fussy eaters are not born um, no dog is going to starve himself to death unfortunately what we end up doing is like okay that one day when the dog says oh i don't want to eat my kibble we'll say oh you know what why don't i just add some 
some cheese to it or add just chicken to it or blah, 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 blah. and then we keep increasing the value of the food and the dog eventually realizes okay if i don't eat this is awesome i got my human trained <coughs> so it's important to uh, understand that you know we create fussy eaters uh, and i generally give it 3 days it's and whoever's done my fussy eating program before knows this um 3 days <coughs> i put the food down if the dog doesn't want to eat it food gets picked up put the food down in the afternoon dog doesn't want to eat it food gets picked up but it's the same food what what is the what is the duration <coughs> and that the food is on the ground for uh oh i so with my puppies all my clients know this my puppy rule is like 10 seconds oh wow um okay yeah yeah uh with my adult dogs i would do maybe 30 seconds to a minute but oh, wow. that's pretty so much that, so the duration yeah. as you are saying is very short uh yeah it's like hey food is here Yeah, yeah the, the most fussy eaters are created because they don't value food because uh-huh. it's around all the time uh-huh. uh and that's a big mistake that most people make is you know they just leave the food down the floor and the dog just just like i feel like we value our food dogs should value their food uh sure, you know sure. we always we have the rule in our house uh saying oh no you know we should not food should not go to waste you know you eat don't leave you know all of that like don't leave food on your table unattended you know all of those rules and i i have always followed them with my dogs and it it keeps them you know you know Enjoy. appreciating yeah. everything that they're getting and that's really important um another thing that i always say is is you know we don't realize how um and i and this is where a lot of behavioral problems uh a current dogs as well is because if you think of what dogs were like you know in the wild years ago and the amount of work they had to do uh to get that one meal it's like they had so much planning hunting running uh you know strategies all of that like sniffing using all of their senses that they have to find their meal and then they probably got one meal and then for the next two or three days they didn't have another kill uh so dogs are designed to go through periods of starvation uh but we've like humanized them so much where we think like oh he has to have breakfast lunch dinner just because i have breakfast lunch dinner um and that is where like we have a lot of problems cropping up with dogs and also because we give it to them so easy uh wherein they are designed to actually you know work and earn uh food and you know use all of their senses and we've just taken that away from them which is just sad honestly because um like dogs are just such beautiful creatures and i really enjoy seeing my dog use all of his senses mm-hmm. and like on a daily basis like most of us just take it away from our pets and you know we just like have them in our house they eat and they go for a walk and come back um and so it's important to to really stress and i always stress on the fact that you know make them work um and they actually enjoy it it's not it's not torture i uh, yeah i i completely agree with you mitali i'm sorry i was looking at my dog he's staring at me uh <laughs> we have you know we have a viewer who has asked us maybe you know her she asked us six times already and i've ignored her i apologize shelly seni i have pinned your uh, question uh, it it basically it goes on further about uh, nutrition so uh, weight loss okay. tips for her old dog with hip issues and uh, he has some uh, kind of problems uh, with his hip so can you just talk a little bit about so when you i actually are you asking me weight loss tips and you want your dog to lose weight yes. is what i'm guessing yes. um so of course i would look into like what you're feeding him as a diet uh number one because you have to understand that if you're doing like kibble versus fresh food kibble is definitely very very uh dense in calories so you cannot have the same amount of kibble versus the same amount of fresh food because fresh food has a lot more water content in it uh so it's lighter so you can feed more of that versus uh kibble um also for hip issues my one and only uh go to is definitely uh is two things number one is um swimming i don't know if it's that's possible but it's it's definitely something that you know it's it's a great exercise uh that you can do with your dog uh wh- wherein like there's very little pressure on his joints and it's still you know it's still working the dog's joints uh there's also in fact hopefully i should be bringing bringing this to india which is something that i have been spoken about but i actually want to start doing a lot of like uh exercise based like a doggy gym sort of thing it's just something i have in my mind uh but uh wherein we can you know remember like you have to work on training exercises on soft like surfaces i would say soft surfaces but not something that's too hard so your dog's not landing on hard surfaces and that's causing more problems with the joints um so yoga mats 
uh, you know, the foam uh, part that you get, you get those on Amazon. In fact, I use this for a lot of my big breeds. Uh, even as puppies, I actually, the, the surface that I train them on, uh, I use like soft surfacing so that they don't have um, any sort of hip issues as they grow up uh, while we're training them. Uh, so that's something you look at. Also, hold I'm on, sure you can. What yes. about when, like, because this is this question is very close to home because Pasha has uh, some hip problems. He's a German Shepherd. They suffer from hip dysplasia, and uh, yes. and this is a question that has been repeated to all my experts uh, who have come on, uh, especially the vet who was here yesterday, uh, Doctor Kumar. Uh, so can you uh, answer? Like, you know, you talk a lot about uh, this padding and this thing this like uh, especially while they're exercising but you know a lot of us live in apartments a lot of us live in houses where we have uh, marble flooring so can you yes. speak a little bit about the adverse effects if any of uh, dog sleeping on these kind oh, of tiles absolutely so in fact i um i honestly two things i generally avoid uh like high energy activity in the house if you have like really slippery flooring uh, -huh. uh i will either use you know it, and especially when i'm doing like so if i'm doing just basic like static exercise of just like you're sitting and you're down and all of that uh i would definitely you know do uh that in the house and that's not a problem but any sort of like brisk walking running fetching all of that i generally will do either in downstairs in your building compound or up on your terrace wherein yeah. or oh, look at him look at him no the reason um, i'm showing that photo uh, the, the, that video angle is to show that he has his own bed and he's also on yes. even though we have marble flooring we have tile flooring i'm just showing that yes. he's on a carpet and he's on his bed yes. and, he, and he's enjoying that and yes. that's because of his problems with his hip he has a, a yes. weak right leg yes. and uh, yes. rear leg and that's why we are doing that and that's something that you're speaking yes. about right now also and we make yes. sure that his beds are in the right place and he loves sitting on the bed because of that yes so, absolutely yes. also there is uh, there are uh, supplements i don't know if you're giving him any of like he's on, he's on glucosamine and he's on a couple yes. of other yes. vitamins yes yes so that's important uh, but unfortunately like uh, uh, going diving diving deeper into this issue um and you know it's it's just breeding Hold like good breeders unfortunately would not have bred uh you know it, it, the the thing is like if if a dog has hip dysplasia uh yes perfect i was just going to that, that's what I, that's what i just said i said you and you know yeah. we are uh, yeah. we, we are in a bit of a lockdown and he's it's about a, a one month supply left and we're really hoping this because we got this from the states it was difficult to get this particular yes, one yes, in india yes, and we got yes. this from uh, from america when my wife was there last last month yes, but yes. it's difficult and it's you know it's tough that you know since we love our dogs we have to get it. there are alternatives to it he was on something which is available uh, uh it, but it's not the same it's not the same because i can see a remarkable improvement. i know that yes i can see I a remarkable I... improvement and it's unfortunately the that. what it is uh, i'm sorry i was i, I... cut you off uh, go ahead No, but that's actually uh, the. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard, but I. The funny thing is, I literally mentioned to him. I said, "Is he on Costco?" And he went and got the got the bottle, and that's exactly what I said. What's going on, Trevor? Just something really funny happened here. Is Norman overturned and he like spooked himself out right now? But, um. So yeah. So anyway, that's that's something that. uh you know you should look into also uh i'm sure if you youtube it uh look at rear end exercises so it's basically like rear end awareness exercises which you can do with a clicker with a clicker and it's like pretty much like a training session okay. um wherein you teach teach your dog to be aware of his rear limbs okay. which most dogs a pet most pet dogs have kind of lost uh -huh. um so that's a really really important thing uh that i would consider doing with anyone that has like back issues uh or like hip issues is basically to teach them to actually use and be aware of all four of their limbs and not just the front two so a lot of like walking backwards exercises uh you know putting back paws on stuff um that would really help strengthen those muscles of the back legs um okay. and give the hip more support you know that uh, that actually expect uh, you know um, i'm supposed to ask you one more question then mithali like uh, you know i live on the first floor and every time we take the dog down to uh, to do his business or for a walk which we will do right now uh, he he uh, he kind of doesn't use his back right hind leg which is weak he just uses three legs to go down yes. the stairs yes. and it's yes. something that i've noticed over the last one year 
and we're trying yes. to figure out a way to deal with that so do you have any suggestions yeah. for that and maybe our- i honestly would look at so uh firstly i would really look at clicker conditioning him so like get him used to you know knowing what a clicker is and like yeah. doing the whole thing of it and i would really work on doing rear end exercises uh-huh. uh wherein like you're teaching him so you know what simple stuff like uh i'm teaching norman how to back up so like uh-huh. move backwards and that's an exercise and it's honestly as simple as um if you follow me on instagram i do like a thing for you but it's really simple uh, yeah. uh and you can teach him to like walk backwards um also what you can do is you know um i'm also that that's something i want to get to in the end is actually teach him to walk backwards and go up onto something like pretty much like okay. walk backwards and i'm sure you've seen those um you know pasha pa- pasha is very good at walking backwards for some reason maybe i will go ahead and try to do that because he knows every time yeah. he, he plays fetch i say you know i i i tell him to drop he's very good because he's a german shepherd and i have worked with him over yeah. the last 7 years so he leads uh, he's very good with his commands so, uh, can you hear me So guys we're having some technical difficulties with uh, Mitali she is just going to be right back uh I was talking about uh can you hear me now Let me show you guys my dog as we wait for Mitali to join us Pasha Sorry I lo- I lost you there for a little while. Yeah, we had some trouble with the uh, with the connection. Can you hear me now? Um so I wanted to show you a little bit because like so I've been actually trying to teach Norman how to bow which is like his front ble- so that's another great exercise as well. It's like bow and uh you know re- lift his rear limb and uh-huh. it's something that uh I started teaching him and the funny thing is I actually realized that as soon as he wakes up he automatically automatically does it as a stretch yeah. um and then i was like i was like hey instead of me going through all of this trouble of teaching him uh why don't i just actually like it's, it's called capturing in clicker training terms i was like why don't i just capture it when he does it so literally like in the morning i wake up and i go and like run and get my clicker and treats ready waiting for him to like come out of his crate and then as soon as he does it is when i click and he was just he got up and came off right now and like he kind of knows because it's been two or three days since i've been like clicking for it and like rewarding him so he knows that oh, whenever i do do this uh-huh. he got up his bed right now and was like offering it to me without even asking but <laughs> dogs are very very smart they are just so so smart sometimes I, too I smart for our good but yeah <laughs> yes i can't i can't agree with you more uh, with ali we uh, i live with a dog who i don't think is a dog he is another human being even though i try to uh, not to treat him too much like a human being as an yes. animal right but he's very smart my dog knows how to open doors he knows how to he knows he has everyone trained really well uh, and he's a smart dog this guy Absolutely. but you're right thank you so much for this tip about pasha i, I am going to actually send you a message about that and maybe you can definitely you know or... start start working on rear end exercises and that should help okay Hi. sorry we got cut out uh but yeah that was I, i i'm i'm yeah go ahead sorry welcome back uh so uh, mitali thank you so much for taking time we just going to it's just going to do a quick uh, conclusion wrap up let you go uh yeah thank you so much for taking your time and helping all of our viewers with the queries and uh, please guys check out mitali's uh, instagram handle mitali salvi i think that's that's the right one and that is right. uh, yes and uh, please send her a dm if you have some ans- uh, question that I won't answer today i apologize i'm working on myself being a better host and uh, mitali has a lot of answers she has a lot of things to impart we're waiting for her to come back uh, mitali we're really looking forward to having you back with us hopefully in the next month uh, you'll be definitely here. definitely would be happy to hopefully i'll be back by then but <laughs> that's what i meant in the next this well in this month then and yeah. uh, and uh, hopefully uh, and we hope in norm can get a, a, a forever home soon yes uh, guys think- norman's looking for a home if you guys know anyone in the us he's currently in texas uh that's my aunt she's chilling with norman <laughs> hi um so yeah please like help me spread the word for him there you go see when he does that is exactly yeah, yeah. when i was like ready with the clicker good boy buddy good boy and now i'm pretty sure he's going to start offering it again because he knows i like the behavior good job uh, good 
Don't there worry. you go. <laughs> That's good to see. I'm glad that I was able to see that. Yeah, he 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 is he's she she clearly likes it when I do it. This morning I woke up and he like started. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Good boy. Okay. Good Thank you, Normie. Thank you for Good showing job. everyone. <laughs> Thank you, Normie. Thanks, Karan. Okay, Mitali. Okay, I'm going to do it. Thank you, Karan. Smart girl. Mitali, thank you. As soon as you come back, you have a connection. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Thank you so much, Mitali. I'm going to let you go now. And you have a great day. This and, was awesome. Uh, Thanks for having me. We uh, hope to see you again. I hope everyone that tuned in. It was really, yes. really amazing. Yes. Thank you for uh, for being here with us. Okay. Bye bye. Take care. Bye. See you. See you guys. <laughs>